for the last few lectures we've been applying the fundamental uh, theorem of calculus to a lot of different uh, scenarios here. We, we did it to find areas, and we did it to find more areas, arc lengths, center of mass. Last time we started with some simple examples, just a finite system with four items. Uh, add up all the torques or all the moments and then divide it by the total force or divide it by the total mass and you're done. We did it in a really nice example here where you cut up uh, this region into infinite many little strips and find the moment for each one of them and add up all the moments and divide it by the total mass. And you got the X bar and the Y bar. That was really nice. What we want to do today is extend that. Uh, on the same theme, what are integrals good for? We want to add to that list. And today we add uh, work. Uh, not work like uh, Monday morning work, but work like physics work. The kind of work that's defined by force times distance. Um, notice it looks a lot like torque, but it's a different kind of uh, force times a different kind of distance. Uh, you're not applying force at certain distance away from a from a, uh, s a pivoting point. Uh, rather, you're taking a force and applying it a certain amount of distance to to a moving object, and uh, thus uh, work creating work. Uh, here's a simplest example, um, by far the simplest example. Suppose you've got an item here that's 10 pounds, right? And suppose you lift it 20 pounds. You pick it up, and you lift it uh, like this. T -t 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 lift it 20 pounds, and then, uh, see, or sorry, you lift it 20 feet. T -t 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 -t. That's called work. You've uh, you've taken a certain amount of force and you moved it in a certain amount of distance, and so. <clears throat> um, this is by far the simplest example, and we can easily compute the total work. Uh, work uh, is equal to uh, force times distance. In this case, the force is 10 pounds, and the distance would be uh, 20 feet. And so the total work is 200 uh, foot pounds. Okay, that's uh, the simplest example of work. Uh, we could do, do it again, and this time, uh, oh yeah, we could also see it as a, as an area. Here, here's a nice way to look at it. If for if you like seeing the visuals, what we did is we um, had a constant force. The force was uh, 10 pounds. 10 pounds. That would be the y-axis, and we moved it a total of 20 feet. And when you multiply these two quantities together. Of course, you've got uh, area, but another name for the area would be 200 foot-pounds, which is equal to work. So uh, this is consistent with what we promised at the beginning of class, that uh, the ubiquity of areas makes this question of areas incredibly important. Uh, here, here's where the problem of work can be seen as a problem of areas. When you label the x-axis as force and this is distance, then multiplying base times height results in work. Okay. And uh, this was super simple. You don't need any calculus uh, for this. But wait, of course, they're going to get more interesting than that. Um, you know, the force is going to vary a lot. So, so that's when it'll start getting interesting. Take the next simplest example. Suppose this time you lift not the pounds but kilograms. So in this case, the uh, the units here are given in in terms of mass, not weight. So we've got to change it for force and. Uh, it's rather easy to do that. Uh, here we go. Uh, so the work, again, is equal to, so again, we're lifting it uh, you know, tw 12 meters up. So the work is equal to force times uh, distance, as usual. And the force is equal to, uh, according to Newton, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Uh, and again, this is distance. So this part is just the force. The mass is equal to 10 kilograms. The acceleration is 9.8 meters per second square, and the distance is 12 meters. Uh, what this gives you, the force part here, gives you 98 uh, newtons times uh, 12 meters, and then the correct units for that would be uh, 98 times 12 uh, joules. Okay, um, units have a little different flavor, but other than that, this is almost identical to the other one. It, it is the base, most basic uh, possible scenario where you find work. It's just a constant force, 
straightforward distance and you're done. Uh, but I thought this was instructive, so just I think everybody should be familiar with the uh, units here. Uh, newtons and joules. As opposed to f uh, foot-pounds. Uh, this is what it would look like. Again, uh, the, the area version of this would look like uh, 12 feet, uh, 10 kilograms uh, times 9. This would be 9. 98 newtons is a constant force. This would be 98. And you got the 12 meters here. When you multiply them together, you get what's Newton times uh, meters. Well, that you get joule, uh, joules. 98 times 12 joules. Okay? Base times height becomes different when you put different labels on it as essential. Um, all right, so anyways, that, that's, that's kind of easy. Well, why don't we take it up a notch or two? This has nothing to do with calculus. This is just a basic definition of work. So I think we should take it up a notch or two and figure out how this would play in our class. All right, so let's do some uh, classical stuff here. Uh, this is called the uh, Hooke's Law, and the uh, Hooke's Law talks about springs, and it says that um, the force required to pull a string is proportional to the distance being pulled. Um, and the proportionality is given by some constant here. Uh, and that what that constant does is, it it'll it'll tells you how many pounds per inch uh, the spring will stretch. In other words, if you stretch, if you put apply twenty pounds, uh, maybe it'll stretch one inch. But if you go two inches, that it'll you'll re it'll require forty pounds. For three inches, it'll require sixty pounds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so often, one of the famous questions that people ask is, well, how, how much work is required in stretching? Uh, stretching the spring from rest to, for example, 10 inches on, on some example like this. And and one way to tackle that is to take it one little tiny stretch at a time. Little tiny stretch at a time and calculate the work required there. How much work is it just to stretch it a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit? So we go with this. Work is equal to force times distance. A little tiny work would be uh, the force times a little tiny distance. If I'm going with distance this way, I'm going to say it's a dx. And according to Hooke's law, the force is equal to constant times x uh, dx. And so I want to add up all the little pieces of work, stretching it from 0 uh, from zero to 10. And I'm adding up all the little tiny pieces of work. And so what that will turn into would be equal to uh, the complete amount of work uh, being given by the integral of kx. That would be kx squared over 2 plus a constant. Yeah, we don't need a constant here. Because it's a definite integral from 10 to 0. And that would give us uh, k times uh, 10 squared over 2 uh, minus k times 0 squared over 2, which would be 0, of course, for a grand total of uh, 150 k. Uh, 50 times k, which of course was given to be 20 pounds. Uh, so it's 50 times uh, 20 for a grand total of uh, 1,000 uh, foot pounds. Okay, that's how much uh, work was done by stretching the spring from 0 inches to 10 inches. That's 0 inches from this rest point. Okay, very, very nice way to see it. Uh, Another very nice way to see it is to see it as, a, as an area. Here, uh, you know, the, the work was calculated by adding up all the little forces uh, times the distances, right? A force times distance. What that turns into, if you look at, um, our little area scenario here, this is your force. This is your force f of x, which is equal to kx. It's increasing. Um, as x increases, the force increases. And this is your distance from 0 to 10. And really what we were doing is finding every one of these little pieces here. Before, we used to call them little areas. Uh, when we label the axis this way, force and distance, uh, now that little area becomes uh, a little work, work because it's distance times force. We were adding up all of these little works here. Again, this is an easy shape, so one could probably do it without doing any calculus, uh, just doing high school ideas. Um, but that wouldn't allow us to practice the calculus now, would it? Alright, let's take it up a notch or two. Alright, let's do some other uh, timeless work problems. 
So now we consider the case where we have a cylindrical tank uh, with uh, water. Uh, we're taking the tank to be 10 feet tall, 3 feet in radius, and the level of the water filled up to 8 feet uh, from the ground. And uh, this is a classical question. Uh, you know, t Suppose you wanted to pump out the water. Suppose you wanted to pump out the water. It takes some work to take all this water and lift it and put it over the tank. Um, that's what we call work in, in physics. And so it's a classical question. How much work is required to pump out the water? And this time we're going to be do it just for fun. Uh, we're going to say not empty the tank, but just leave it down to three feet level. So we we'll want to empty the top five, uh, the top five feet of that. Uh, by the way, that you could we could have said the same question for the rope. You know, just pull ten feet. Don't pull all twenty feet. It would make it an interesting question. So we take a variation of that here. Let's empty it down to three feet level. How exactly are we going to do that? Uh, well, if you've been watching the lectures, now you know that we're almost like a one-trick pony here. Uh, we've got one trick, and that's about it. We cut things up into infinite many little pieces, and then uh, using common sense, and then we let the magic happen with the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus. That's exactly what we're going to do here. Uh, let's take a little tiny piece of water here. Let's suppose we could freeze it and slice it up into infinite many little pieces. Uh, what would happen? I'm gonna take that little slice right there, make it blue, and I'm gonna say, you know what? Pretend that that little piece right there is, is a little frozen. Oh, I'm gonna fill it in with uh, water. There you go. So this is a pretend. This is a a uh, an incredibly little thin disc of water, right? Pretend it's frozen, and I'm gonna slice it up like this. Slice it like this, and slice it like this, and slice it like this. Infinite many of these little slices of water, frozen water levels. Okay? And I'm going to... And I want to calculate uh, the amount of work that is required to just pump out this little tiny level of water. Um, and then we just use common sense. Alright, so how much work does it take? Work is equal to force times distance, still just the same as before. Uh, now, let's give this place some axis so we can figure out distances. Let's say this is uh, the y-axis, this will be the, sorry that's the x-axis, this is the y-axis. Um, so how much force, let me see, how's, uh, another way to ask how much force is how many pounds does this little tiny thing weigh? Well, that would be probably some density constant times the volume, a little tiny volume. Uh, however much volume it has times the constant that tells me how many pounds per square feet or cubic feet I have of water. I multiply that density. In fact, I think I got it right here, 65 point, I've written it somewhere, 62.5. In case you don't know it, usually... Um, 62.5 pounds uh, is equal to uh, one cubic foot. That's the density for water. 62.5 pounds per cubic foot. So if I multiply that density times the volume, however many cubic feet I have, I'll, that will tell me the force. That's what I needed to know. And then the distance, well how much am I pumping this out? I gotta take, go from, from this level, which is y, all the way to this level, which is 10. It's got to come all the way from y to 10. So this is a vertical distance, making the top minus the bottom. So my little tiny work required to pump out that little tiny slice of water would be 10 minus y times the density times the little volume. And I can even do better than that, right? What's the volume for a little shape like that? Uh, volume for a cylinder would be uh, pi r squared times the height. That's the that's the uh, general uh, formula for the volume of a cylinder. But of course, this is no re ordinary cylinder. This is an incredibly short cylinder. In fact, the height of it is so tiny. It's incredibly tiny. The height of it is a dy. And more than that, I know the radius. The radius is fixed to be three, so that would be nine. So slowly I'm cleaning this up. Uh, so the small little uh, work required to 
pump out that little slice of water would be huh, delta times pi times 9 times 10 uh, minus y times dy. All right. Now that's pretty much as clean as I want to get it. Uh, I can't prolong it anymore. I'm doing the addings now. And I observe my limits should be y limits, and so I look at the y here. And I try to observe all the little slices. Where do they start and where do they stop? So we agree that we're going to have slices here. They stop at eight and they start start at three. All the way. I'm gonna. I want to take all the slices starting with the slice at three and go all the way to eight because the uh, problem read for find the work for pumping out all the water down to three feet. So after three feet, I'm good. I'm, I'll stop. So these will be my limits, three to eight. And of course, that integral right there, that's that's what you call duck soup. Um, I'll do it anyways. Everybody can use more practice on integrals. So I'll go ahead and do it. This will be delta times pi times nine times, I gotta do the integral of that. That would be 10y minus y squared over two. And then I'm going there from eight to three. So this will be delta times pi times nine. And this will be uh, 10 times eight minus uh, eight times eight divided by two uh, minus 10 times three uh, minus minus that would make it plus three times three divided by two and whatever you get that's the answer and I don't really care what it is pretty nice huh oh yeah and the Delta you, you need to substitute the uh, the density for water which was uh, 62.5 uh, pounds per foot and if you keep track of the units which you should um, You'll see that the the work should be foot uh, pounds. Um, pretty nice, huh? It could get a lot more interesting if you, this shape was different. The shape was really easy because it was just plain uh, cylinder, but it you know you could have a cone, canonical shape, or prism, or whatnot. Uh, they get a little more interesting, but I think this is an excellent one to start off with. Huh, I think that will do it for us.